Let's look at question 7, which consists of uh, answers required for descriptive questions. There are two types of uh, questions that you should expect. One on internal flows and the other one on external flows. The first question on internal flows, we are asked to describe how does surface roughness affect the pressure drop in the pipe for the two flow scenarios, laminar flow and turbulent flow? Now, in the case of laminar flow, the effect of surface roughness on friction factor and pressure drop is negligible. Now, this is surprising. One would expect that the rougher the pipe, the friction factor will increase. But the answer, we have to be very clear that it arises from the nature of laminar flow, where each smaller cylindrical tube slides within an outer cylinder tube of the liquid. So there's no real... Uh, sliding action between the pipe and the fluid because from the nature of laminar flow, one tube within the flow slides inside an outer tube and the outermost tube touching the wall encompasses the roughness so there's no question of the surface roughness affecting the flow. However, in turbulent flow, rough surfaces will have higher friction because tubes with smooth surfaces have less roughness. And again, the rougher the surface, because of the nature of turbulent flow, there is mixing within the fluid layers. There is no uh, one tube sliding within another uh, tube. So the effect of the pipe now plays a part on the surface roughness. Okay, so the important words are highlighted. The surface roughness leads to a much higher pressure drop in turbulent flow. Now let's look at how is head loss related to pressure loss and how would you explain how to convert head loss to pressure loss. Now the answer is quite straightforward because head loss is related by this formula, the hydrostatic equation. P, you recall, is equal to rho GH in its basic form. Uh, let me write it for you. P equals the density times G times H. Okay, so we make H the subject of the formula. H is equal to P over rho G. So instead of H, we have a head loss. Instead of P, we have a pressure drop. And of course, rho G is on the denominator. So what is the relationship? Head loss and pressure drop are linearly proportional to each other. Now let's uh, press on with external flow. In external flows, we are asked to define the frontal area of a body subjected to external flow. Let me uh, remove that. And where is it appropriate to use frontal area in drag and lift calculations? Now, the frontal area 
of a body is the area seen by person looking at upstream. The area projected on a plane normal to the direction of flow of a body. Okay, this is a nice, uh, what you have here is a nice picture of a little sphere and fluid flowing and the frontal area is a vertical disc okay projected perpendicular to the flow a little sketch usually helps in your answer now let's look at part d in flow over cylinders why does the drag coefficient drop when the flow becomes turbulent now the answer is the turbulence moves the fluid separation point further back to the rear of the body, reducing the size of the wick and thus the magnitude and pressure drag, which is the dominant mode of drag. As a result, the drag coefficient drops suddenly. Continue. As you can see from the sketch that I have drawn, we have our sphere in two scenarios. In the first instance, you notice that the flow is generally becoming turbulent. In the second instance, there is considerable amount of turbulent flow. But as you can see, the turbulence gives rise to mixing and the separation point, in fact, moves ever so slightly more towards the back of the sphere. This reduces the region of weight compared to the first. And as a result, you see a drop, a dramatic drop in drag. Finally, the last question, you are asked, what is stall? And what causes an aerofoil or airfoil to stall? The decrease in lift with an increase in an angle of attack is called stall. When the flow separates over nearly the upper half of the aerofoil or airfoil, the lift is reduced dramatically. The separation point is near the leading edge and stall is caused by flow separation and the formation of a wide wake region over the top surface of the airfoil. Okay, as you can see from the little sketch that I've drawn, for an angle of attack usually greater than 15 degrees, around 15 degrees, there is a flow separation at the leading edge as the fluid is unable to follow the geometry of the aerofoil and there is this separation point here and the separation point re results in our airfoil stalling that ends this solution